the linear system approach to sound uh, is really simple. It's, it just means that what you put in, you get out. It doesn't modify it. So you put in voltage, you get out power or whatever you're doing. But it's an exact replica, and you're just changing it to a different world. It's the same. You don't change anything. And that's the basic definition of linear. And the advantage of this is that the, the reason we like linear systems is because they're very easy to measure, very quick to measure, because they just do one thing. They just, you know, put a tone in, you get a tone out. If you put noise in, you get noise out. So they just follow the input or whatever they can do. The self-powered allows us to set and create the thing so it has a certain structure. So in other words, if you put in a certain voltage, one thing happens. In other words, so you don't have controls here modifying that because it makes it much easier than to drive the system because you know exactly what it is all the time. It's always the same thing. I mean, in other words, it takes, in this case, maybe a volt to bring it to a certain level, and it always does that. You don't have to worry about this thing that's behind the screen up in here being anything different than just taking an exact level and doing an exact thing. It allows you to pre-program things. You can do much more. The other big advantage of linear systems is they're they became popular in hi-fi because in a stereo system you're going to have more than one instrument in each speaker so they can keep they'll keep things separate because they don't modify each other they don't create and blend they don't create new things they keep them separate that's what the linear theory is and in, in building systems that do that amplify linear amplifiers you put in complex tones you just only get those tones out you don't get more tones nonlinear systems which have been popular everywhere have the problem is, is you put in like a into a subwoofer that's nonlinear means instead of just putting in say a tone at 40 hertz from a bass guitar and getting a tone back out again it'll maybe change that tone and make some 80 hertz out of it i may make some other frequencies out of it on top of of it and that may change with level so in other words as you put energy into these nonlinear subwoofers that are so popular they change the sound into something maybe much more satisfying or better who knows the problem with that is, is that you have to match those subwoofers in a nonlinear world to each place that you're going to put them. So you create, so you're back in your dub station recording with these things, and this is the sound you want. Well, then you have to put those speakers in place to recreate that. But if you create that sound upstream, in other words, through some kind of processing, and you have a linear system, then it's much easier to set up all the other rooms to play the sound back. Like you can have an explosion recorded from a real explosion and then play it back on a linear system, it'll sound like an explosion. And you don't need to have the speakers enhance that. You just, you capture it the way you want to. And then that gets reproduced. So it's, it's much more direct. And what you get is what you get. So you have to modify your, your, your source material to make it sound. You can't rely on the systems changing it into something like tape saturation or limiters and all that kind of stuff. You don't want the systems to interfere with your that way. So they're, that's what we're proposing because it makes it much easier to verify that the systems are all set up correctly. You can do it very, very quickly with linear systems. You can even do it with the music itself. I mean, there's lots of things you can do. Nonlinear systems require a huge amount of time to make characteristics out of. Linear systems don't change with level. One of the whole points of a linear system is called scalar, which means that at one level, if you go up 10 dB, it goes up 10 dB. And it just carries everything through without modifying it. So if it's noise, it stays noise. If it's uh, uh, something that's got flutter in it, it reproduces it with flutter. It doesn't, doesn't make any judgments on or d d any corrections. Uh, and the whole system can be linear all the way from the time it leaves the dub stage to the time it arrives in the movie theater and re reproduce linearly. There's no point to ever not do it linearly. So every recording medium, which are generally linear, especially things like PCM and stuff, are basically linear. LPCM means linear, you know, so it's a whole way of, of uh, uh, doing this rather than some nonlinear way of take, throwing the data away, saying we don't need that, we don't need this, we don't need that. One idea is to compress something and then recover it and recover it completely, you know, but th these are like room saving measures and things like that, you know, so those would be considered linear systems because they don't change anything. So lossless systems of any kind, it basically means that you can pass a signal through. And that will allow us to really um, know that when we play music, we're going to be—it'll sound like music. When we play sound effects, it'll sound like sound effects. So it's up to the movie industry to listen to these things in the systems we put out, the Asherons, 
because that's what they've been designed to do. Create the level you need uh, at the distance you're working, and it, it's as powerful as any cinema system, and yet it has a lot more dynamic range so that it can play music more effortlessly. For whatever reason, uh, there's a lot of nonlinear elements in the cinema system. This doesn't make them bad or good. It just means that it's you know the they 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 use horns that have more horn distortion, second harmonics and third harmonics, things like that. And those subwoofers will create overtones and structures so that they have a sound associated with them. You have to set that up to know what your thing is going to sound like over those systems. So those have to then be duplicated. The problem is, is the they. They don't duplicate well because it takes so much work to identify a nonlinear system that they don't often get really characterized well. So often a variation or something will change and they won't be the same kind of nonlinear system anymore. And you see this a lot with little woofers and little musical instrument drivers and things like that. They vary all over the place depending on who's making it because it, nonlinear systems are very difficult to characterize. The self-powered Asheron, uh, we have taking care of uh, all the kinds of things that one would do outside manually. It gives us the opportunity to choose a crossover point, which is around 500 cycles, that and horns and drivers and combinations of things, since it's all fixed, it has a very, very, very smooth vertical and a very, very smooth horizontal. Very hard to do when you, when you have space parts and, and you've got crossovers because you can't optimize. Generally, they don't have enough power in these tools to really optimize and you wind up with uh, interference patterns when you move up and down vertically. So you can, there's a lot of things you can really optimize because you're not trying to uh, worry about what size amplifier someone might put with it and things like that. You have, and then you can monitor the power and the level so the thing doesn't uh, just get crushed and really loud and awful. It only gets up to the SPL that we're trying to achieve uh, and all the headroom passes, but it won't infinitely get any louder than that because it just, it's designed power-wise to be at that certain point. In other words, an Asheron, uh, depending on if it has this little subwoofer or not, is really designed to go between 10 and 20 meters. That's its operational range, which uh, 10 meters you could probably get away without its little booster, 20 meters if you're working at that distance, you'd need it, you know. If you use like a studio version that we're making, that would be five to 10 meter range. It's designed to work closer, same level, same experience. So we can get away from talking about uh, this one has less peak power. All this doesn't matter. What matters is the experience at the listening position at the five meter point. If we go into a, a room that's 6,000 people, the Asheron, and we're 80, 100 feet away, then it's not the same, it's, a bigger, it's another system. Asheron can't keep up. In, in that bigger facility. So you, each system is geared and designed to fit into a space and be optimized for that. That's what I'm saying by the same experience. You want the same experience, but the systems will change to create that experience. That's the huge advantage that I see in, the, in what we're proposing. I think it just makes it easier for everybody in the end.